Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam using Macaulay's method. We have to draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram. Also, we have to find the maximum deflection. EI is given as 8000 kN meter square. In this beam, there are two point loads. Both of them are having the same magnitude 12 kN. This load is acting at the distance of 2 meter from the point A and this load is acting at the distance of 4 meter from the point A. In this beam, we have symmetrical loading. The total length of the beam is 6 meter. We know that in the fixed ends, there will be movements. In the point A, we have the movement MA and in the point B, we have the movement MB. Also, we have the vertical reactions RA and RB. In this beam, there are three different parts AC, CD and DB. So, we have to make three sections. One section in AC, one section in CD and one section in DB. You can see that I have made three sections. One section in AC, one section in CD and one section in db. I have made all of the sections at the distance of x from the point b. Let us name the sections as xx. Now let us find the movement about the sections. We are going to find the movements from the point b. In this case, we have to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. In the point B, we have MB which is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is X. This point load is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For this load, we have to take this distance. This distance is X minus 2. This load is also acting in the clockwise direction so that it is also negative. For this load, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 4. This term is only applicable from the point B and up to the point D. From the point D and up to the point C, we have to consider both of these terms. From the point C and up to the point A, we have to take all of the terms. So these three terms should be separated by the dotted line. Now let us equate mxx with ea d square y upon dx square. Let us integrate this equation. When we integrate d square y upon dx square, we will get dy upon dx. For integrating these two terms, we can use this formula and for integrating x minus 2 and x minus 4, we can use this formula. When we integrate minus mb, we will get minus mbx. When we integrate x, we will get x square upon 2. When we integrate x minus 2, we will get x minus 2 the whole square upon 2. And when we integrate x minus 4, we will get x minus 4 the whole square upon 2. C1 is the constant. 12 upon 2, we will get 6. Let us integrate this equation again. When we integrate dy upon dx, we will get y. When we integrate x, we will get x square upon 2. When we integrate x square, we will get x cube upon 3. When we integrate c1, we will get c1x. C2 is the new constant. When we integrate x minus 2 the whole square, we will get x minus 2 the whole power 3 upon 3. And when we integrate this, we will get x minus 4 the whole power 3 upon 3. 2 into 3, we will get 6. 6 upon 3, we will get 2. We know that in the point B, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope and deflection. So when x is 0, the slope dy upon dx will be 0. 
and the deflection y will be 0. In the point A also, there is a fixed support. So when x is 6 meter, the slope dy upon dx will be 0 and the deflection y will be 0. We just saw that when x is 0, dy upon dx will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. When we do that, we should not consider these two terms because these two terms are only applicable beyond the point D. When we apply this here, we will get C1 which is 0. Also, we know that when x is 0, y will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. We know that we should not consider these two terms. Finally, for C2, we will get 0. In the slope equation, let us apply the value of C1 so that we will get this equation. In the deflection equation, let us apply both of these so that we will get this equation. We know that when x is 6 meter, dy upon dx will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. Since we are considering the full length, here we have to take these two terms. You can see that I have taken both of them. After simplifying, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 1. We know that when x is 6, y will be 0. In this equation, let us apply both of them. When we do that, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now, there are two equations. Using the calculator, we can solve both of these equations and get the values of MB and RB. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, See the description below, there is a link, you can click the link and watch the video. In the slope equation, let us apply the values of MB and RB so that we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 3. In the deflection equation also, let us enter the values of MB and RB so that we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 4. Now we are going to find the maximum deflection. In this beam, we have symmetrical loading. So the maximum deflection will occur in the center. The total length of the beam is 6 meter. 6 by 2, we will get the center 3 meter. So the maximum deflection will occur between the points C and D. So when we take the deflection equation, we should not consider this term. Because this term is only applicable beyond the point C. To find the maximum deflection in this equation, instead of x, let us apply 3. When we do that, we will get minus 20. The value of EI is given in the question 8000. For the maximum deflection, we will get a negative value. That means the deflection occurs downwards. We have found Rb and Mb. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find Ra. Ra and Rb are acting upwards. So both of them are positive. These two loads are acting downwards. So both of them are negative. Finally for Ra we are getting 12 kN. Now let us take movement about to B and find the movement Ma. We have to follow right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. RA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. This load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4. This load is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it is also negative and the distance is 2. MB is acting in the clockwise direction, so that it will be positive. Finally, for MA, we will get a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. 
I am going to find the shear force values from the point A and towards the point B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Using that rule, we can find the shear force values. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bedding moment diagram. For that, first we have to assume the fixed beam as a simply supported beam. You can see that I have assumed the fixed beam as a simply supported beam. We know that in this beam we have symmetrical loading. So we can easily find RA and RB which we have done already. To find the bending moment in the point C, we have to multiply RA with 2. 12 into 2 we get 24. To find the bending moment in the point D, we have to multiply RB with the distance 2, 12 into 2. Here also we will get 24. Then we can connect this line and connect to the bottom line. This diagram is called the free movement diagram. Then using the fixed end movements, we can draw the end movement diagram. For MA, we have got 16. For MB also we have got 16. Since both of them are same, we have a rectangle shaped diagram. Then we can combine both of the diagrams so that we will get the bending moment diagram. If you wanted to find the maximum positive bending moment, we have to find this height. 24 minus 16, we will get 8. Alternatively, we can draw the bending moment diagram by finding the bending moments separately for all the points. To find the bending moment values in the points A and C, we can use right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. Let us find the bending moment in the point A. In the point A, we have MA which is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. Let us find the bending moment in the point C. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. Or A is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. Finally, for the bending moment at C, we are getting 8. To find the bending moments in the points B and D, we can use left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Let us find the bending moment in the point B. In the point B, we have MB which is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. Or B is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. Finally, for the bending moment at D, we are getting 8. Using the values, we can make the bending moment diagram. You can follow any one of the method whichever is easy for you. In these two points the bending moment becomes zero. We can find the location of these two points. This diagram is symmetrical. So both of these two distances will have the same value. I am going to take this point and I am going to make a section in this point. You can see that I have made a section in this point. We know that in this point the bending moment is zero. Using the right hand side rule, we can find x which is 1.33 meter. Let us apply that. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.